I've had a lot of self-talk in my life about like, you don't know how to like let people love you. You don't know how to receive. You don't know how to like open yourself and be flowing. I mean, like I have a lot of talk about kind of like an inner rigidity. But recently I was like, screw that. I am like, (laughs) I'm actually, I am spontaneous and receiving and, and I can do the dance and, and all my relationships can get better and deeper and stronger. And I don't know, it was like this inner click that just was like, stop the self-talk that is about a kind of harsh view of my own controlling nature or something. You're listening to The Milk Podcast. This is the show where we talk about motherhood and sexuality with amazing women with fascinating stories to share on the joys of being a MILF. Now here's your host, the milfiest MILF I know, Jennifer Tracy. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Jennifer Tracy, your host. This is MILF Podcast, the show where we talk about motherhood, parenting, entrepreneurship, creativity, sexuality, food. <laughs> I'm looking I'm looking at a picture for next week's guest. Her life is food. So, but I'll get to that in a minute. Today on the show, we have Heidi Rose Robbins. Heidi came to me through Jules Blaine Davis, who was on the show a couple weeks ago. And Heidi was so warm and inviting and lovely and just welcomed me into her home, not knowing me at all. I mean, she knew me through Jules. So like I was vetted, (laughs) but what just a beautiful spirit. And I'm so grateful that I had the time that I was allowed the time to chat with her and record on conversation. Heidi Rose, she's an artist, an astrologer, a director, an actress, a mom, brilliant. Just she's as we all are. She's so many things. And um, it was just luscious to sit down and talk to her. And I really hope you enjoy uh, our conversation together. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hi, Heidi. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm so excited. (laughs) So Heidi is also a podcast host and the name of your podcast is? The Radiance Project. Why don't you talk to me a little bit about, talk to me and our listeners a little bit about it. Yeah, it's been such a joy. It's so funny because I originally started thinking about a quote unquote podcast like 10 years ago, but then it was a radio show. Right, (laughs) right, You know, I was like, I want to do something with astrology on the radio. But it took me 10 years. And then finally, I was like, okay, it's now or never. But um, it's a very interesting synthesis for me because the podcast is astrology, poetry, inspiration, and very good company. So it combines my lifelong study of astrology, my, my poet self who loves poetry and writes poetry, the search for all forms of inspiration. And I I love to talk with friends, you know, and so I sort of think about it as my little Mr. Rogers neighborhood, like these are the people in my neighborhood, let me introduce you. I love it. So I've been having such a good time. Oh, I love it. I can't wait to check it out. And um, I have since so I was referred to Heidi by Jules Blaine Davis, who was on the show uh, a couple weeks ago now. And um, so immediately I went to your Instagram and started following you. And I so look forward to every day your written you know, moon. I'm. I'm not. I don't. I just call I them love moon astrology. Notes. Moon a, notes. Yeah, okay, that's great. all I call them. Yeah, I love it. I'm like, oh yes, it's so juicy. It just feels like a like a little treat, like a piece of candy. So I'm. I'm really enjoying oh, I'm experiencing so that, I'm and so uh, I can't wait to check out the podcast as well. Yeah. So. This is a MILF podcast, and on the show, you know, we usually talk about everything feminine, everything motherhood, everything parenthood, entrepreneurship, like just this idea of we were these beings before we had children (laughs) who had dreams and hopes and ideas and points of view. And then we became moms and that was forever changed. And then once the children are school age, you have again, this sort of rebirthing of like, oh, maybe I do want to do a podcast or maybe, you know, and so it kind of, that's kind of how I sort of birthed the idea of this. And that, so not, not that every, I mean, every conversation has been 
vastly different, as you know. Like yeah. that's how it goes. You're just like don't know where it's going to take you. But having knowing nothing about you other than that you're a podcaster, a fellow podcaster, and an astrologist. Yeah. Tell start from the beginning. Where are you from? Ha ha. Well, I was born in Macomb, Illinois, but I grew up in Fargo, North Dakota. So isn't that wow. funny already? <laughs> yeah. Far ago. Yeah. Like um, the movie. Yeah, exactly. And I was there. Well, I was there till I was 13. But it was actually a remarkable childhood in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, I somehow lucked out and, you know, had amazing teachers and amazing artistic experiences. And in fact, these three incredible human beings moved to Fargo and started a theater company for kids just as I was ready to participate in such a thing, it's still going wow. like, you know, 30 plus years later. And wow. it was one of these companies where you're, um, we did Oklahoma and they planted a cornfield. We did Wizard of Oz and they created a gigantic yellow brick road that was a hundred feet long. Wow. And, you know, so it was one of those magical things. So you think about Fargo and you're like, what's there to do in Fargo? But in fact, create stuff. We created stuff. <laughs> My dad was an opera director. So yeah, an, an opera director in Fargo, North Dakota. So, you know, it was, it was, a, it was actually a really great enriching childhood. <laughs> do you have siblings? Two brothers. I'm in the middle, middle girl, you know, that. Wow. That lovely what was thing. that like? Did you have bruises on both arms all the time? <laughs> you know, they left me alone, actually. My, they sort of had their own thing between Got themselves, it. but you know, yeah, it was, it was not traumatic. It was fine. <laughs> I was the peacemaker though. You I know, bet. Always, yeah. I bet. Is that you still your role? Yes. One, in the world, <laughs> not just with your brothers, but like... Oh, how profound. You're, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're already on to something here. <laughs> yes. Yes. And also, I would say that my journey has also been around um, learning to rock the boat as well, you know, and learning to come forward with what might not necessarily be received beautifully. I always want to create harmony and I always want to create beautiful relationship and I always want to talk about how we're connected and and how we can love more yeah. and but i you know there's the other side of that where you become too accommodating or you want peace at oh, all costs totally. and all of that yeah. yeah yeah i just had that experience the other day where i made a boundary with my ex-husband uh, we have a very amicable relationship i feel very fortunate that's wonderful um but i made a boundary and he was like really taken aback like it was just like with a scheduling thing yeah he was like Oh, because, oh, you know, I'm just <laughs> usually very accommodating because I like that. I like living in that. I just, you know, but it's I so I relate to that. What you're saying, yeah. like sometimes you do need to just stand in a different place at a different angle with a different perspective and try that on and go, oh, this feels good, too. And yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that's interesting. So, OK, so uh, till 13 Fargo, then where? Ridgewood, New Jersey, nice like the suburb of New York. So it was a perfect time because I got to move just when I was ready to like be able to explore New York yes. City, right? Ugh. And I loved theater at the time, and so to get to go in and see shows and um, to get to be just near New York in all ways was wonderful. And I happened to fall in with a great group of kids who were all also all moving at the same time. So mm. all my best friends in high school all had moved there at the same time. So we had a little sweet group of people that, you know, we're still very, very close. So yeah, I was in New Jersey till, till uh, I graduated high school. And then I went upstate New York for college. And then where'd you go to college? I went to Vassar College. Oh, beautiful. Which was Amazing. beautiful. And um, spent a year in England. And then really since then, I've been kind of like all over. And finally, I've been in LA for almost 20 years now um, yeah. and longest place I've ever been. To, but before that, Chicago, uh, Seattle, Boulder, Dallas, Texas, you know. Yeah. You had to check everything Travel out. You had to make sure. You had to be like, <laughs> where, what feels good? Try it on. Exactly. I get it. Yeah. Um, and what ultimately, well, what did you do after college? Like what were you exploring work-wise or? Yeah. You know? Well, so I, you know, for the first 30 years of my life, I would say I was or 25, I was deeply in the, the artistic journey mm. and I wanted to act and I wanted to be involved with theater and I, I, I just loved all forms of creative expression and I still do. But parallel to that was always running a spiritual path because my dad is an astrologer and teacher of metaphysical things. And so I was always like entrenched in the spiritual as well. Um, so at first I went on to graduate school. I got my MFA in, in theater and acting 
Um, and then I pretty wow, much you got a master's. Yeah, I got Wait, a master's. Where did you go for that? Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas. Wow. <laughs> Which I couldn't. I was like, wow, I'm going to Dallas, Texas. It felt I don't know. I just didn't have a, a relationship to Dallas. Right. But it was an incredible program. Yeah, and that it was program free. I've heard of. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> and I, there were uh, there were eleven remarkable humans that were on the journey with me who I. I adore every one of them and I'm still in touch with every one of them. And so that was like a huge blessing to learn about community, yeah. to learn about confidence, to learn about presence, to learn about expression. Like it was a gorgeous journey. But pretty much when I got out of graduate school, I was like, huh, I don't think I want to act. <laughs> I mean, I still yeah. went on. I went to Chicago and was a part of a theater company for a little bit and I directed a lot. But yeah. Already in me, I was pretty clear that I had gone on a journey for d this journey for different reasons. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. God, yeah. you're so lucky. <laughs> I wish I would have gotten out of 25. I had to keep <laughs> going for another 10 years. Well, it's, it, you know, it, and of course, there are all these overlaps, right? Totally. And all these things when you're totally. like, well, I'm done with this, but then you have an opportunity to step in here or whatever, you know? Yes. So, um, yeah. And then I think that one, another big turning point in my life was, moving to Boulder, Colorado. And I worked with a man who was doing sort of um, what he called ceremonial theater. And every um, month we would produce a, a community production around each of the astrological signs, believe it or not. I love it. So That's we, so Boulder. Yeah, it's so Boulder. I lived, I'm from Denver and I went to uh, school in Boulder for a semester before I transferred to BU. Oh my god! And gosh. so I, I can just, I can see exactly all the things. Like, was it off the hill or something? It, it was, was like, up Sunshine Canyon. Okay. <laughs> and, at the Star House. Have you ever heard of the Star yes, House? Yes, of course. Yeah, they're yeah. one of the people that own that or my dear friends. Yeah. But, um, you went to BU, Boston University? Yeah, after that. I, I almost went to BU, like, yeah. Anyway, I, that was a huge like turning point because that was where artistry combined with the astrology and combined with the spirituality. And I started saying, huh, maybe we can get up and embody these astrological energies, you know? And so even today, I do uh, what I call radiant life retreats. For, for nine years, I've done radiant life retreats with women where we embody the charts and we learn about ourselves through those embodiments. And wait a minute, this is fascinating. <laughs> I'm so into this. Oh my God, I love this. Stuff. So embodying and like, do you do movement, like dance movement or just any, just, any, just body movement? Well, both language and movement. And so for example, in a chart, the three most important positions are your sun sign, your rising sign and your moon sign. So I might put three women, if we were doing your chart, I might put, might put three women up on the stage and one would be your sun, one would be your moon, and one would be your rising sign. And of course, there's a wretched way that each sign manifests and there's a glorious way that each sign manifests, right? Wow. So if I were maybe doing, a, you know, an Aries uh, sun, I might have to talk, I might, you know, there might be a lot of impatience and there might be a lot of like, you know, fight initially. But ultimately, Aries is about coming forth as a pioneer with your new ideas. So each woman would watch herself on stage embodied and it's the most emotional experience. It's it incredible. It sounds amazing. Yeah, people, I mean, they just fall into sobs and laughter and it's a profoundly healing thing. I would assume just from this tiny brief description of what is a very intimate and personal experience, what I would want to get out of it and hope to get out of it would be just such a deeper understanding of myself is too general, but my, my journey and my path and my perception of things and how I, you know, that's what I would think. That and, sounds and amazing. You would, you would, because like, it's interesting if you, if I was going to be really simple about it, I would say the moon is our past, the sun is our present and the rising sign is what we're cultivating so you really do get to see the journey and you do get to see where you get stuck. You know, actually, we did recently with a group of women that have been going to the retreats for like nine years. We finally videoed um, all 12 signs, an embodiment of all 12 signs. And it's on my website and you would love it. I can tell already. <laughs> Ooh, what's your website? So Heidi Rose Heidi Rose dot com. And Heidi Rose you, yeah, com. Heidi Rose dot com. And you just click on embodiments. And they're all 12 signs embodied at the most wretched and the highest level. That sounds and, amazing. Yeah, it's really fun. It's really fun. So you can see, I mean, that's wow. just where I combined the art artistic path and the spiritual path. And, I love that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So somewhere in there, you 
uh, get married? Are you married? Yes, okay. I, I am. I um, when I was living in Boulder, I taught. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Interlock and Arts Camp? Of course. Okay. I I was a student there for four summers, and I taught there for seven summers. So I met my husband at Interlochen and he was choreographing the broadsword fights for Henry V and I was directing. <laughs> and it was a whirlwind romance and we kind of knew immediately and it just, you know, now we will have been married next year for 20 years. Wow. Congratulations. You. Yeah, it's kind of hard so think. you met there and moved to LA from here, so, from there? He was still in graduate school. He had one more year in okay. graduate school. And so he did that. And then I left Boulder and we set out on a journey. We did some kind of crazy cross country thing. Like, should we live in, you know, San should we live in Dallas? No. Should we live in San Diego? Should we live in Seattle? Should we live in Los Angeles? And we ended up actually in Seattle. So we spent our first uh, bunch of years together in Seattle. Nice. And then we moved down to LA in 19, no, in 2000. In 2000. Okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. And so then you have children. I have children. Yes. Okay. So when did they come along? So we actually were together eight years before we had kids, mm. which was... It's why you're still married. <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> I think that's true, actually. I, I'm serious. I, do. <laughs> I mean, I was definitely ready beforehand and yeah. I'm four years older than him. And I was like, come on. What, you know, he's a Taurus, so he's a little slow yeah. in terms of like, you know, let's do this thing. Yeah. yeah and my daughter is now 15 wow. and my son is going to be 10 next month. We were together for eight years and then we were just ready. And he, you know, he's an amazing dad. He loves... He loves all things fatherhood. And so mm. I myself could not do anything other than that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like I need, mean being I need a, a partner. partner like yeah. that because I am a woman that's like, yes, I'm having a child and I'm continuing my work. You know, I mean, you know, I and mean, like, did you know that before you became a mother? I did. That's so great because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know anything. I just was like, what happened? blindly went into it. So did you feel like when you went into it, like, well, this is now my life or... or I didn't know what I needed in a partner. Uh -huh. And I did after I had the baby and, and then my son and then realized that my partner wasn't able to provide yeah. that for me. Yeah. You know, through no fault of his own. He's a beautiful man, yeah. but it just wasn't what it didn't. And that's ultimately why our marriage didn't work. And then as far as like work, I mean, I had been a working actress off and on. I mean, I say working like with air quotes, you yeah. know, but working actress, doing sketch comedy. I had a sketch comedy, um, two women sketch comedy show with my best friend, Sabrina oh my God. Hill. And sometimes she goes by Hill. Sometimes she goes by Weiss. <laughs> she does the intro for the show. She's a voiceover actress, oh, like very, very I heard successful yes, voiceover okay. actress. So she, um, we did for seven years, we did, and we did comedy festivals and this is all leading up to my and, and I was nine months pregnant doing comedy festivals with her. Anyway, that I had my baby. My husband left town for work because he's in the film industry. And I was just alone with this child, no family, no help. And I felt like a failure because I later realized I was diagnosed with postpartum much later, like two and a half years later. But I didn't know that I really needed a, a lot of support, preferably from my partner. And B, I really needed to have something that wasn't mommyhood. Yeah. Yeah. And I couldn't because there was just was not time. Yeah. So that, you know, and again, that was part of my evolution and it's part of, I'm grateful for it because it's why this podcast is here and it's helping a lot of women. Yes. And that's the Hallelujah. goal. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but I just am fascinated and so admire that you were so clear on that before and that you chose an appropriate partner in that regard. Well, and again, though, you don't know, yeah. you know, I, I was clear on it and, but you don't know how, how, gonna how they're going to adjust to fatherhood right. or whatever. But I will say there was this very seminal moment where I had my daughter and I was, I'm always interested in studying things and learning things. And this, this um, one year hand analysis class was going to start mm -hmm. and it was going to be one weekend every month for, for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And I, and it was starting when Kate was two months old, three, three months old, three months old. And my husband was like, do it. I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, do it. And he, so he spent an entire weekend and he'd bring Kate to me and I'd, I'd nurse her. Aww. But like, I knew at that point I was like, okay, 
we're, we're good. Your team, you knew your <laughs> like, team. You know, because, and that's the way we've moved forward is I would say that's our primary thing in relationship is like, how do you need to grow next? Ugh. You know, and I will support you in that. And that's so beautiful. And of course, there are all kinds of other of issues. Course, but, but yes, I would course, yes, it is yeah. beautiful. And, it, yeah. and and I'm grateful. And that and I feel like there are all kinds of challenges in life. But I feel so blessed that in many ways, it's not in the realm of relationship for me, do you know, like, in just in the sense of being like a, a partner, a co co collaborator, that kind of thing, we're really on board for one another. Yes. So, so you have a two month old, you did this hand reading <laughs> hand class. analysis. Hand analysis. Yeah, yeah. So okay. it's not, not at all fortune telling, not okay. at all psychic things. It's more about life purpose and Got it. things like that. And then what developed for you from there? Well, that was just pure joy and healing. Like, yeah. um, but all along, at that point, from the time that I moved to LA, I was doing uh, astrology readings. So that's actually my main. That's my main work. Is Got I'm it. an astrologer and I have a private practice and I've had it for 20 years. And um, so all along, I'm doing astrology readings. There was a period of time right when I moved to LA that I was still directing. I did. I, I wanted to direct a whole bunch of. I ended up directing a whole bunch of one woman, one person shows because mostly because I love helping people take that like that huge leap into the next flowering of themselves yes. more, even more so than because I love the artistry of it. I yes. love like you're growing and you have a story to tell, you know? So I did like, I directed like five one person shows, but mostly astrology. So, you know, you just continued on yeah, doing yeah, that. That's doing so astrology. Great. And then my husband does many things. He's an actor and he's a, a fitness writer and, um, a Feldenkrais practitioner, which is a whole body. Oh, I love Feldenkrais. Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. And then it's an amazing yes. offering that isn't distributed enough. But, um, but at a certain point, Kate, what Kate was four and we sort of looked at each other and we're like, are we not, are we not going to have another child? Are we going to have another child? We were sort of in this dialogue. We we're so happy in our little threesome, la la la. But he had just been in Macbeth, uh, in, in, in Olympia, Washington and, I just remember having this moment of decision, like we want, you know, her to have a sibling. And so um, five years later, we had Dylan. So, wow. Yeah. And it was, I'm glad it's a really good age uh, yeah. break somehow. It has worked for us. Yeah, that's and, nice. Because you have, I mean, I only have one son, but I would imagine it's nice to have had that time with Kate up until so then she's in school and then you have the baby again. I mean, there's something nice about yeah. that. And um, did you have, how were your pregnancies? Fine, as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, was I pregnant? I guess I was. I mean, I... Which is when you're pregnant for, for the first child, which I only have the one. It's like, oh, the pregnancy, the pregnancy. And I remember my friend was just a few months ahead of me and she had the baby. She's like, Oh, you'll forget all about this. This is nothing. This is a blip. This is, this doesn't even mean anything. Yeah, I mean, I vividly, of course, remember the births and yes, um, and the pregnancies. I felt, I think, you know, I felt pretty solid and pretty good and pretty like I'm just going to follow my intuition. I didn't do a lot of reading. I think I bought what to expect when you're expecting and then threw it across the room. Like a week Same. later, I was like, oh, Same. this pisses me off. Yeah, and I was just like, and then I and then I did read like um, Ina May Gaskin's oh, Spiritual yeah. Midwifery. Yeah, so that I could just read birth stories that felt like real and organic and it happens all the time and you know all of that yes i had a guest on the show sarah lamb who did a documentary about ina may really? and all those women oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah the farm and yeah that was huge help to me and in fact there was a moment in kate's journey uh, when i was pregnant where we ended up like we had some bad numbers or whatever and we ended up in genetic counseling and i was like i was like why am i here i don't want to be here and we walked out the door and we went to tour a birth center in Hollywood. And I was like, this is what we're doing. And it was like this decisive moment of just brought me so much relief. And I'm so glad that I just kind of found my way there and um, found the way that I wanted to birth and all of that. And, you know, so. Yeah. And did you have any like postpartum or anxiety or anything like that? You know, for me, it was more of a physical recovery. I had a very intense, I mean, like I lost a lot of blood and it was a very, very intense birth. And there were many, the first several weeks I was like, couldn't really even get out of bed, you know? So, and I don't remember really having an emotional trajectory around, you know, I wasn't down for a long time, but it, but it was a big recovery. I would still say it was a big recovery. 
with Kate, with your first Yeah, with child. Kate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't have, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call a postpartum depression, but I had like a post body, <laughs> you know, like reckoning, oh, bring, <laughs> yeah. bring my body back, please. Yeah. And bring my energy back. Uh, and that's, you know, yeah, um, I had some, I mean, my birth was very quick. It's called a speedster birth. You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it was very quick. So it was um, start to finish. I had my first contraction at 830 something PM at home. And he was born at one thirty nine in the morning. Oh my god! Yeah, it was oh crazy. My god. But I had third degree tearing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> that sound. Yeah, like inhale through the teeth. It's like very. <laughs> it's like universal. Yes. So I had that, and then I had. Um, I also lost a lot of blood. I didn't need a transfusion or anything, but I remember just like my husband was like, "You don't look good." Right after, I was like, "Oh." Oh, yeah. There's some pictures where I look yellow. I mean, I'm like yellow. And my husband is like as ruddy as you can be. And I'm like, we look like we're of different ethnicities. It was like we're just crazy. Yeah. But But I had to sit on a donut for like, I mean, not that sounds so funny for people that don't know what that is. Not an actual donut with icing, (laughs) but like a donut pillow because I couldn't. Yep. Yep. And it was really, yeah, just just that piece of it. And it was, uh, and I was on. I feel like I had to be on Vicodin for a couple of days and I hated it. I was like, oh, I don't like the way this makes me feel. And then I went off it pretty quickly, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's no joke. <laughs> it's, it's no joke. joke. It's no joke. It is an initiation. Yeah. And it is, I don't know. It's about the most open and raw. And I, I also remember deeply feeling this receding like this, that I was on the journey myself, even though I was surrounded by, you know, beautiful doula, beautiful midwife, my husband. But like, I was so, I felt so like, I I closed my eyes for most of it. And I just remember feeling like, I'm walking this, I'm walking this, I'm walking my own pain. And I, my labor was like, 36 hours. Oh my God. You know? <laughs> oh my God, Heidi. Oh my God. Until the moment I was rocking in a rocking chair and I sat up and I was like, why is everyone sitting around? Are we going to do this or not? And they were like, she's ready. She's ready. My, you know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. It's amazing. I mean, I always like, I don't always say this, but I've said it. Some of my guests have said it like, if men had to give birth, like, <laughs> I don't think we'd be here. I think that's probably very true. I remember my husband was like, you know, had been with me for, I don't know, 20 hours. And then he sort of disappeared because he was hungry and he went and ate some chicken or something. And I came back, he came back in and he like, smelled like chicken. And I was like, <laughs> first of all, why were you eating? I mean, like I was in this, you know, like, course, you know, this, you know that was my inner thing was like, what are you doing eating chicken? Why do you smell like chicken? <laughs> you know, we're like, get out of here with your chicken self. And, you know. <laughs> chicken self. <laughs> and he was very kind and sort of removed himself for a while. But I was like, no. You know, anyway, it was just. Get out of here with your chicken self. That is, I need a t-shirt that says that with your name underneath it. That is so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> And so, okay, so now you have, you said a 15-year-old and a 10-year-old? I do. Yeah, he's turning 10 at the end of November. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, a boy and a girl. A boy and a girl, Maggie. Do you know that from Crimes of the Heart? <laughs> I always think of Crimes of the oh, Heart. Oh, yeah. Boy and a girl, Maggie. That's boy right. Boy and a girl or something. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I remember, yeah. Um, so you have a teenage daughter. What's I that do. like? She just went to um, school today for Halloween dressed as Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. Oh, I love her so much. I know. I just adore her for that. Oh, like I'm like, yes, baby. That's so um, great. it's it's great. She she is um she's been very in terms of the teenage, you know, she's been great. Like she, if anything, probably she just needs a lot of solitude. She needs, you know, she needs quiet in her room. She yeah. needs but but she's not removed. Yeah. Um what what's the, I tell you the most wonderful and surprising thing is when you get to this age, they start to really, really show up as who they are, right? Yeah. I mean, all along they do. But but my mother and my husband's mother are both like incredibly politically active, like strong women that, you know, fight for the right, right? And I am, I would say that I am a person that encourages and heals and helps people understand themselves. And, you know, I'm not out there yeah in the in the front ranks right although 
sometimes I think I it, the times require it right now. Yes. And, and I've do, gone to a bunch because of Kate. I've gone to a bunch of like postcard writing things, and you know. But Kate turns out is like fight, you know, politically active and engaged, and writing hundreds of postcards, and you know, telling people on Instagram about you know this is the last day that you can register. And so anyway, suddenly. I've got a real political activist on my hands and I love it. And I've, it's deeply surprising to me and deeply wonderful. So, That's so great. Yeah, yeah. And boy, she's here at the right time. Thank goodness. Yeah, I really, she you is. Know? Yeah. And that of that generation, like, I think that's wonderful to have that yeah. kind of awareness. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yearning for awareness and wanting to spread awareness because yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'll be very curious because up until now, it's been very much like she's a singer songwriter and she's got the whole artistic vibe. But yeah. she, recently, just yesterday, I said, oh, honey, can you help me make these things for a fundraiser? And she said, yes, mom, but we're in the last week before the uh, before the election and all my attention has to be on that. And I was like, blessings on you. You do whatever you need to do. That's you know? so amazing. <laughs> so That's so amazing. You know, yeah. And where is your family still now? Are they in New Jersey still? Or? Um. My mother is in Santa Fe and my father is in Finland. So the, the the same year Andrew and I got married, they divorced, which was an intense year. Um, and so he, my father remarried a Finnish woman. So he, he's in Finland and my mom lives in Santa Fe. And then my brothers are also, one's in Durango and one's in Arizona. So, okay. Um, we're all spread out. Yeah. We're going to get together for Thanksgiving and, you know, we do, we do gather, but, yeah. um, do you ever go to Finland? I've been to Finland only once, okay. and, but we got up to the Arctic circle <gasps> and that like? amazing and weird and silent and strange light. And it was, you know, we climbed a mountain at midnight. We, somebody had a dig, didgeridoo oh, who wow. played at midnight when the sun was still up. I mean, it's a, it's a surreal place. Very um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. But really worth it. I was five months pregnant with with Dylan when oh, I went, wow. so that was another kind of interesting thing to be on that journey, pregnant. Yeah. But yeah, I bet. Yeah, and was Kate with you on that? Yes. Yeah. Also, yes. oh, she got to see it too. Yes. Yes. And That's she does funny. remember. She was little, but she does remember. Yeah. She remembers enough of That's it. That's pretty magical. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we've already been talking for, it's like, this always just flies. I'm sure this happens on your podcast. I know, I'm like, what? Just like, yeah. um, so what else did I want to ask you? Well, I want to ask you, I mean, I selfishly want to ask you about my, um, not that you can do my chart in five seconds, but my, if I throw at you my sun and moon and rising. Yeah, you know it. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. Of course. So my sun sign is Gemini. Mm, okay, perfect. My <laughs> moon sign is Aries. Yes, I knew you had to have some Aries. I was like, she's got to be, she's got to have some Aries. And <laughs> my rising sign is Virgo. Oh, beautiful. So, okay. Well, your sun sign is Gemini and Gemini is the connector and communicator and loves to exchange ideas, meet people it's the messenger, it's on the go. But at a very high level, Gemini loves to blend the head and the heart. So it doesn't just want to collect the facts, it really wants to imbue those facts with love. And so you have wisdom, you know. So Gemini says, I have a message. And you clearly have a, you know, yeah. you're a messenger, you have a message. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, it also depends what area of the chart the sun is shining in. Like, is it shining in the area of career? Is it shining in the area of family? We don't know that yet. But so Gemini is quick and sharp and clever and light and bright and wants to connect everything and everyone. Aries is the other sign of the zodiac that is young and bright and new. Like you have an incredibly youthful energy about you that's just like game for anything and like, let's dive in. And Aries is like, let's dive in. Let's talk about everything. <laughs> you know? And you're an Aries. I'm an Aries. Saying, yeah. yeah, yeah. So a moon in Aries is particularly like you can have an impulsive nature and where it's kind of like ready, fire, aim instead of ready, aim, fire. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Oh my goodness. So, yes. you know, I mean, but there's some, there's a joy about impulsivity. There's a joy about diving in. There's a joy about being a pioneer. So you take the best of Aries, which is you're a pioneer. You take the best of Gemini, which is that you are a messenger and you have something to say. It also rules writing. Um, and then you are the Virgo rising is the most important position in your chart, the most important because it's what's rising in you. It is your soul's calling. And Virgo rules physical, emotional and mental health and well being. It's the priestess who says, I will practice, I will show up 
And I will practice so that I can feel more and more connected to spaciousness, to love, to grace, to the divine. So you are here to heal not only yourself physically, emotionally, and mentally, but also to be a beacon of light and healing for others and to find your truest, most devoted work, which has to involve your messenger communicator self. So you're doing it. You're doing it right now. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you're you are. Good. <laughs> you are really good. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, yeah. So, I mean, and, and think about it. That's just a tiny part of the chart. So, you know, so there's so much to look at in a chart and so many relationships to look at. But I will say this also, uh, Virgo and Gemini and Aries, oh my gosh, all have Mercury as a ruler at different levels. And Mercury is the planet of what do I have to say? How do I want to say it? Can I share what I'm thinking about? Can I share my new ideas? I want to ask you a thousand questions. Let's ask questions. Let's explore. Let's discover. Let's analyze. And let's share something new with the world. So you're, you're, you're so Mercury. So I'd want to know where your Mercury is. That's what I'd want to know. Interesting. Oh my gosh. Well, maybe I'll have, I'll come back and have you do yes, my chart. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah. Just on the way here, I was leaving Jules a message and I think the beep went off, which often happens because I just have so much to say <laughs> and it just, it, more ideas come and more ideas come and more ideas come. And, and sometimes I do think that perhaps I could be diagnosed, you know, ADD. Because it's like it's just my my mind pings back and forth like this and this and this and, this and oh oh but that makes me think of this. But wait, what was I saying? You know, it's just like that is like, totally a Gemini. You know, every sign, as I said, has its own like difficulty or yes. place where it gets lost. And Gemini scatters focus. Yeah, and Gemini's like I have on my toes and my fingers yeah. and ten different honey pots. <laughs> it's really fun, but you know, it's like where should I focus? And yes. that's why the sign opposite Gemini is Sagittarius, the Archer that says, I'm going there, you know, and shoots its arrow very specifically to the bullseye. And I've had to, because of doing this podcast and these other projects I'm doing, I've written a novel. And, okay, you um, are a writer. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, teaching an online course about creative empowerment. And all of that requires focus and consistency mm -hmm. and organization. Yeah. And so for me, it's been like really just, I think, I guess what I'm getting from you is like, like hooking into that Virgo piece of like yep. grounding in. And I, I feel like I'm 43 now and I'm just starting to like ease into that and it feels really good. And that's part of my creative empowerment course is teaching creative people that want to birth that thing that's been bothering them, bothering them in good way. Like when you're aching to create something, yeah. whether it's a one person show or, you know, a painting or whatever it is, but then you just don't. Yeah. And I want to help them kind of move past that, not doing it and just getting into it. Beautiful. So, you well, know, there, th your Aries moon will help with that. Okay. You know, like you, you, you encourage people to dive in and then yeah, Virgo rising, you're calling in earth. Yes. You're calling in groundedness you're calling in refinement like refining a creative project and you know packaging it well and whatever it is you know yeah. like you're calling in the editorial eye for detail and so beautiful yeah <laughs> oh my god that's so cool i'm totally gonna have you do my chart that sounds really fun yeah. um okay oh my gosh heidi so fun i so we have come to the time in the interview where at the end of every interview, I ask my guests, all my guests, uh, the three, uh, the same three questions. Okay. And then I go into a quick lightning round of just silly, okay. fun questions. <laughs> and you just answer however you feel. There's no wrong answer. What do you think about, Heidi, when you hear the word MILF? I, now I think about pure electric joy and connection and it makes me feel really curious. It makes me like milf. Yeah. Like, and, but now I know. <laughs> Good. Yes. So curio curiosity and joy. Excellent. Okay. What's something you've changed your mind about recently? Okay. I'm going to answer it in a big, deep way. I'm going to tell you that I've, there, there, I've had a lot of self-talk in my life about like, oh, you just don't know how to, you don't know how to like 
let people love you. You don't know how to receive. You don't know how to like open yourself and 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 be flowing. I mean, like I have a lot of talk about kind of like my inner rigidity. But recently, I was like, screw that. I am like, <laughs> I'm actually, I am spontaneous and receiving, and and I can do the dance, and and all my relationships can get better and deeper and stronger. And I don't know, it was like this inner click that just was like, stop the, stop the self-talk that is about a kind of harsh view of my own controlling nature or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that was a big one, but I really, it's, I, I bring it up just because recently I was like, no, that's changed. I love that. So it makes me feel really happy and it makes me feel like I have a whole new lease on life in a way. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And well, and that's the, your, your description of yourself as an open person is my experience of you having never met you mm. before today. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you welcomed me into your home, gave me a big hug, welcomed yeah. me in here, asked me, I mean, this is a very intimate exchange and you've just shown up completely and been mm. so open. And so, yeah, yeah. thank you. I so appreciate having <laughs> this time you. with you. How do you define success? How much are you in love while you're doing what you're doing? Mm. And how many people are you uplifting to be more fully who they are through what you're doing? Mm. Mm. Okay, lightning round. Ocean or desert? Ocean. Favorite junk food? Oh, that's so good. Um, let's just say chocolate chip cookie dough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Movies or Broadway show? Broadway show. Daytime sex or nighttime sex? Daytime sex. Texting or talking? Talking. Cat person or dog person? Dog person. Have you ever worn a unitard? Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking, yes, it was in graduate school. I was supposed to be a wild hare in the desert. <laughs> A wild hair, like H A R E, yeah, or... like a rabbit. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. What color was the unit? It was gray, beige. beige. Yeah, yeah. It was it was horrific. <laughs> it was truly horrific. That was just one of the tiny little, you know, uh, African scenes where we were all animals, and it got better after that. But that was a truly low oh, moment of my um, theatrical life. <laughs> a wild hair. That actually, I think. We just found the title of this episode. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I, I really How about the chicken line? Come on! No. Okay, there you go. I think I think that one trumps it. Yeah. Oh, I can't even say that word anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, right, I used to one. love that word, but now I'm like, yeah. ah. Yeah. Um, okay. Shower or bathtub? Shower. Ice cream or chocolate? Ice cream. On a scale of one to ten, how good are you at ping pong? Ooh. Anyway, I could have an electric moment and just like beginner's luck or something. But okay. I haven't played in forever. <laughs> <laughs> what is your biggest pet peeve? Lateness. Mm. <laughs> because I have a moon God, I was on time. <laughs> I have oh a moon God. in Capricorn. <laughs> no, I'm always, I'm always early. In fact, I asked Heidi, can I come a little bit early? <laughs> because I am just, if I'm late... <laughs> I have anxiety coming out of my ears. Yeah, me too. Oh, it's terrible. So I'm glad we're aligned on that. But I have to say, it's a sad thing because my kids, like, you, you know, those moments when you're like, oh, oh, no, <laughs> oh, no, they've inherited this. And, you know, like my daughter has this anxiety about being late and, you know, and I'm like, oh, so now yeah. I try to be just as calm as I can be yeah. if we're being like, it's okay, honey. Yeah. It's okay. And inside I'm like, ah! I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> You're faking it. You're faking yeah. it till you make it. I love it. Okay. If you could push a button and it would make everyone in the world 7% happier, but it would also place a worldwide ban on all hairstyling products, would you push it? Yes, in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to all you gorgeous hair, uh, hairstylists who I adore and I love my own, but <laughs> I'm sadly not a hairstylist person. <laughs> Would you rather have a penis where your tailbone is? <laughs> okay. Or, or a third eye, literally an eye, eyeball in your... Uh, I'd rather have a third eye. <laughs> what was the name of your first pet? C. 
Cinders. What was the name of the street you grew up on? It's boring. 923 South 6th Street, Fargo, North Dakota. It was like a grid. (laughs) So we're going to go with Cinders South 6th. Oh, is this my porn name? That's your porn name. This is the MILF show. We have to tie it all up at the end. Um, yeah, I like that. Cinders, Cinders South, South Six. Six. It's got a... I love that. I got a little gift at the end there. Heidi Rose, thank you so much for being on the show. This was a treasure. So much fun. Thank you. And I'm so happy to know you now. Same. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed my conversation with Heidi. And next week on the show, I have Catherine McCord of Weelicious. You may be familiar with her Instagram account, her cookbooks, her beautiful lunchboxes that she makes for her children. And she's also just an incredible person. So I really hope you'll tune in for that. Thanks so much for listening. And I just want to give a shout out to my amazing team at Fullcast, particularly Sarah, who is completely steering this ship. And I'm so grateful to you, Sarah, every week, every day for doing all the work that you do. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.